welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie, your empowerment coach. And what is up? How are you doing? Let me know in the comments below. So today I am bringing you a really fun and creative way of tapping into your higher self. And if you are new to the self-development journey, to your own spiritual awakening, and you've been hearing this term a lot, your higher self, let me know also in the comments below and let me think, well, let me know what comes to your mind when you hear this term, oh, excuse me, higher self. And some of you might be thinking that your higher self is someone that's ultimately better than you and where you're at. But that's not necessarily the case because where we find ourselves, even if we're working through heavy things, even if we're not in the place we want to be, doesn't mean that we're in the wrong place or we're in a place that we shouldn't be, right? Perspective shift. But to me, I believe that your higher self is someone that represents the values that are important to you, that maybe you've lost touch of because being influenced by your external surroundings, which is okay, it happens and that's why you're here today and you've come across this video to reconnect with your higher self. So you can also reconnect with these values that maybe you've lost touch with and that you want to reclaim. And continuing to construct this aligned and authentic life to who you are, to your truest essence. But sometimes figuring out who we are authentically and who our higher self is can be a little difficult and can feel completely foreign. So also let me know in the comments below if you hear this message and you also feel like it's foreign to tap into your higher self and you don't really know what you're doing. I know we've all been there as well. But the cool thing is that this activity is an activity that you can always do even for years to come because our higher self is always going to continue to evolve just as we also continue to evolve and grow and learn and unlearn and maintain this authenticity. I also want to remind you that even when you do get to the place that you want to be emotionally and mentally and just overall energetically, it doesn't mean that the inner work is done. It's more about maintaining where you're at and what you've built so far for yourself. Before we go any further, if this is your first time coming across my channel, welcome, hello, the energy does not lie. So I know that my video has come up for you for a reason, so welcome. And for everyone that has been subscribing and that they're new to this channel, hello, thank you so much for growing this online community that we have here on YouTube in the Bee Tribe. So like this video, comment, because I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your feedback, and I love just knowing where you're at because that is super helpful for me and also knowing what to create after this video. So like I was saying, get to the good stuff, liking, subscribing, commenting, and also follow me on Instagram at Thrive with Brie so we can connect some more as well. And you can also learn about the different ways that I support women towards achieving the desires that they have and towards living the best life that they are ready to fully commit to and claim. So exciting, exciting stuff. So I will now be showing you hands-on how to do this activity because I do recognize that the audio when I am recording a video sometimes isn't always the best. So I am going to switch over to a voiceover so you can hear that even better. I do appreciate you bearing with me while this audio on my phone while recording isn't that great. I know it's a little dodgy and that is something I am changing. But in the meanwhile, I appreciate your patience in still being here with me and receiving the messages meant for you and taking part in this really fun activity. So let's get started. So you're going to need a piece of paper, preferably watercolor paper and watercolors. You're also going to need some paintbrushes and some water. Don't get it confused with the water you're drinking and a very thin pin, thin point marker as well. And the reason we're using watercolors today is because it is such a free flowy material that you can play around with and really just kind of like let go of that control we tend to have with the free flowing color and water. If you are using 
regular paper, be careful with how much water you are placing onto the paper. So firstly, you are going to start with one side of the paper, thinking about your strengths, thinking about the qualities that you possess, that you admire, that you appreciate yourself, because so often when we are thinking about our higher self and who she is and the traits she possesses, we tend to forget about the amazing traits we already have, the amazing strengths we already have. So you want to start off with making a little list. It's almost going to sound like affirmations by writing out I am dot 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 and then starting your list. You can see I'm having some trouble with writing mine out due to the pen that I was using. Also, since you will be painting on one side, make sure that you are making this list with a pen or pencil, not with a marker. You don't want it to bleed through into your drawing or into your painting that you will be making afterwards. So start your list thinking about maximum, well minimum, three traits that you can think of and then go from there thinking about what are some other traits that I have and if not many come up for you, do not place any type of blame or well, not blame, but don't be so hard on yourself. Think of think of three. If more than three come up, even better. But just start where you are because you know that you can always go back to your list and add on to it. As you can see on my list, I have already written a few traits that I admire about myself, a few strengths as well. And the last one that I just wrote is patience because I definitely do not consider myself 100% patient, but I definitely am a lot more patient than I once was before really diving into my own self-development journey. So I'm writing it down either way because even though I, it is a trait that I still am working on, it's a trait trait that I am super, super appreciative for having, for building upon. So make sure to write any traits that you are currently working on, working towards increasing for yourself because it's still a trait that you have. Even if it's not, you haven't fully embodied it 100%, it is something that you are working towards. So why not recognize it? So once you have all your traits and strengths written out, I want you to look through the list that you've made and just really acknowledging each one and how much you've strengthened these traits, how much you practice them on a daily basis and just really acknowledging how powerful you really are with these strengths and just focusing on the positive and just feeling appreciative for having these strengths and also celebrating yourself by doing so, by doing this of appreciating and really noticing how you apply these strengths in your life. And as you think about these strengths, I want you to then think about what animal is also associated with these traits that I have just written out and thinking about your higher self in this way rather than visualizing what she looks like, which is also a great activity to do. It's something I've done as well, which I've enjoyed drawing her out. And that could be something else you can do in addition to this activity, but rather than really focusing on what she looks like, which can sometimes be difficult to get all these little details. I want you to think about what animal represents your higher self. Flip your paper around, get your watercolors ready, your paint brushes ready, and begin to paint out what this animal looks like. And I don't want to give too much away because I don't want to influence your subconscious on how you end up drawing your animal, but all I'm going to say is think outside of the box. When you think of the animal that represents your higher self and these qualities that you've written down, maybe not all of them, but the majority of them, I want you to feel free to let go and tap into your inner child a little bit by exploring the colors that you want to use and really thinking outside of the box. Like I mentioned, not using the typical colors that the animal that came up for you is made out of. So as you can see, for me, I am, and let's see if you can guess what I end up painting as I go, but I play around with purples, uh, magentas, and blues as I'm making my animal. 
So as you finish up your animal, I want you to take a step back and really acknowledge everything that you painted and the colors that you used. There's always a deeper meaning than what we can see as well. So really reflecting on every single detail as much as you can, you know, allowing whatever is meant to come up to come up. Next, you're going to grab your fine tip marker and you're going to start writing some of the traits that come to mind when thinking of the animal that you drew. So for example, I painted an elephant and I wrote out that it's wise, it's family oriented it's nurturing and these are just some of the different types of traits that came up for me so write it all out everything that you've kind of grown up thinking about when thinking of this animal and after you finish writing it all out I want you to then compare what you wrote around your animal to the strengths that you wrote on the opposite side of your sheet and really comparing the two because these two um, traits that you have been able to identify is what is pretty much making up your higher self. So it allows you to really get out of your mind of what she does look like and focus more on these traits that you can also focus on embodying through this physical representation that we can see through the animal you chose. That was today's art therapy activity and helping you connect with your higher self. I hope you enjoyed it. For me, it was so much fun always being able to use art as a medium of expression and reflection. It helps me really get out of my head and also tap into my inner child, just letting it all go and creating. So remembering, reminding yourself, I want to remind you, a gentle reminder that it doesn't need to look perfect. This art piece is only for you. And like I said, it's a reflection of an expression, a form of expression and reflecting and reflection that you are having. So it doesn't have to look perfect at all. And when you think about your higher self, I also want to share another perspective that it's not about being perfect, that you're almost... If you believe in the universe and source and God, that our higher self is not up here on a pedestal, that I feel like we kind of tend to place our higher self, especially when we start to hear the term higher self, we think it's someone that's way better than us, right? Someone that is perfect. But it's not about connecting with this perfect version of yourself because none of us are perfect, especially in this human form. We're making mistakes. We're learning, we're figuring out life together. So it's not about being perfect. It's about connecting with traits, beliefs, and emotions, and overall energy that brings you onto a path of being who you authentically are. So perfectly imperfect and flawed. And the traits that we have identified today about your higher self and the animal that you believe is will mirror your higher self is just a reinforcement of how to nurture yourself, how to care for yourself, how to support yourself through these moments where you see your flaws the most. We're not meant to feel shame or guilt or insecurities over our flaws. We're meant to embrace them and that's what our higher self allows us to do. So connecting to your higher self is what brings you self-acceptance and self-compassion to who you are in this moment, who you've been and what you've experienced, and being able to move forward in life with this sense of ease and peace, knowing that no matter what you did in the past, no matter how you handled certain situations, how you behaved, right, that is just a part of the journey and you feeling at peace with all those parts of yourself. So let me know in the comments below how this activity went for you and also message me on Instagram if you want to hear more about the colors that you use and what chakras it's associated with and what it might mean further for you if you do want to reflect on this activity some more. So until the next video, I will see you and continue thriving and shining. And if there's a specific type of topic that you would love me to make a video about, let me know also in the comments below. It is super super helpful for me. So thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. And let's continue growing our community together. So share this video and give it a like because it does help it being seen by other expansive souls that are on the same wavelength as you and I.